Hello again, I'm Doug Smith. Welcome to the 17 April 2015 edition of Portsmouth This Week, the voice of Portsmouth Town Hall. Uh, my guests today are from the Portsmouth School Committee, and it's uh, we have Chairperson Terry Cortfran. Terry, welcome. welcome. And also a, a school committee member and also clerk of the school committee, Tom Vadney. Welcome, Tom, yep. to the right show. Here. Thank you for having us. Uh, you, you've recently submitted your budget proposal to the town council, which they dearly loved for reasons we'll talk about. Uh, I'd like to discuss that and some of the other ongoing initiatives that y you all are doing, but I wonder first if we could discuss the basics about the school committee, how, how many members, how, how it's elected, what it does. We're a seven member body and uh, half the board is uh, elected every two years. So it's a four year term. Okay. but we alternate half and half so okay. that there's always continuity okay, well, on the three board. Three and four, is that how yeah, it works? Yeah, three and four, like right. Okay. Right. And uh, uh, what are your responsibilities? As I recall, looking at the, at the documents, it's a pretty serious charge you guys have. Our most, um, in, our most important responsibility is hiring uh, the superintendent and then establishing policy and finance budgeting. That's, those are our three major roles. Yeah, it's and overseeing. Yeah, it's an overseeing that those policies okay. and the budget is implemented properly. And essentially you guys report to the people of Portsmouth because you're all elected officials, so you Absolutely. have an official role there too. Yes. I think it's, it's quite a job description. That if uh, people want to go online and, and take a look on, uh, online to the town or the school website, you can link to both either one from either either one. Uh, to look at, at your mission statement, it's, it's quite impressive. Uh, are, are there any members that have like an education background or, or, or are in education or have been in education? Our, our vice chair, Emily Copeland, is a uh, adjunct professor at Bryant in political science. Yes. Okay. And, and Tom, you were talking earlier about training that, that you all have to go through. Yes. Uh, the state mandates that all school community members take six hours of professional development every year. Now our particular school committee, uh, we uh, go as a group and we actually go way beyond that mandate. We go to practically every event that's offered. So we do spend a lot of our Saturdays together yeah. and uh, discussing the latest education issues that come through the Rhode Island Association of School Committee. Yeah, I think you guys had the some kind of training this week already, yes. as I recall. Uh, we, Tom and I yesterday went to a training of the uh, New England Association of Government, government Finance, Finance Officers. officers. <laughs> 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 and we were invited by uh, uh, Jim Lathrop to attend and uh, uh, the deputy, well, the new interim finance director for the town and Tom and I were the only yeah. ones from Portsmouth in attendance. So. Yeah. yeah, you learn about such topics as uh, bond issues and yes. compliance. Yeah, probably uh, more than Gatsby. you need to. Yeah, it's a Gatsby and new <laughs> Gatsby both coming out on OPEB and a few other interesting topics oh, yes. that I'm sure finance guys A million, like a million acronyms as well. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's okay. pretty interesting. Well, that's good. I just, uh, that's good background for anybody that might be interested in getting on the school committee at some point. Yes. Uh, l let's go to the budget request. I know the town council and I think all citizens of Portsmouth were delighted that you're able to submit a budget with no made, no real increase over last year. Uh, uh, people can see, people should know that they can see the entire budget plus the budget presentation plus the, uh, the strategic plan of the Portsmouth School Department uh, online. They're available at both the town's website and also on your website. And I would encourage citizens, particularly those with, a, with an interest in the school system, to go and take a look at that because it's pretty important stuff. But uh, I wonder if you could highlight some of the key elements that you think are important from this budget. Well, I think coming up with um, the savings and the, the zero increase really took having a new superintendent uh, take a look at everything line by line with each principal, each school um, to come up with different ways of thinking about how to approach education in the schools and I think that's how we were able to uh, incur some of the savings and then the uh, special education insourcing is probably our big major initiative. Yeah, actually I wanted to ask you about that because I know that decision was made what 
four, five, six months ago, I guess, to opt out of the East Bay Collaborative. Yeah. I wonder if you could give us some background on that, on that decision. Why do we do it? We had been looking at it because we felt like uh, that we weren't really getting a great return for our dollar in terms of accountability, transparency, uh, control of the budget, uh, even educational outcomes. We hired a group, the Futures, Futures Group. Yes, they uh, specialize in, in special education, I think. They, they uh, did a, they audited our, um, our relationship and made a recommendation um, that they thought we could financially do better, and that was the basis of our. Okay, so decision. we think essentially we could we can do a better job ourselves for the for yes. less money. Probably. Right. Well, yes. the goal was to do the better job for the same money because on paper you should save money being yeah, in a regional exactly. arrangement. But unfortunately, the way that the accounting worked, uh, we ended up subsidizing some of the other member school districts. So money that would otherwise go to Portsmouth kids were. We're not so, though it's uh, more expensive to do it on our own. It's at the same time less expensive, and um, and I think we'll see a better product with yeah, educational outcomes. Yes, yeah. and that was the goal. The money that we saved, which was about a half a million, I believe, Terry, wow. uh, is just yeah. sort of icing on the cake. Yeah. Yes. Uh, just just a, a kind of statistic that stuck out at me. Anyway, it was in your presentation, I think. Uh, uh, we spend about a thousand dollars less per student than the statewide average, and then the next thing that was projected was that what that what that translates into is about a two point five million dollar yeah. savings yeah, right. over the estimate. I, I thought that was quite incredible. So I think your finance director is doing a tremendous job, yeah. apparently. Now a few years ago, uh, one of our previous uh, superintendents attended this national um, event and. She came back with a little factoid. Uh, they had done a survey and found that Portsmouth schools uh, were rated the best bang for the buck in Rhode Island, that we were producing the best outcome for the, the amount of dollars being put in. So, so the taxpayers are definitely gaining value out of our schools. Yeah, well, it's, it's those kind of little sound bite <laughs> things yes. that I think are important to get out there because it, it shows you're doing a, an efficient and effective job. Uh, one of the, 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 the largest expense probably, and this is probably true for all New England towns, is infrastructure. You know, and, and I, I know one of the proposals or a major expenditure is for the schools is upkeep. Uh, trying to keep those old 30-year-old boilers working so that the kids can you know, go to school in a safe environment. Uh, you estimate, it's been estimated about $2.6 million dollars. Uh, and, and this was approved by you guys last week, uh, and the bulk of this would come from the school fund surplus, uh, which is, uh, th that whole fund surplus issue is kind of a, a, a difficult topic for people to understand. But I wonder if you could discuss the issue uh, and the need for these, this boiler repair, this uh, expensive. Oh, absolutely. Um, the surplus has been growing um, over the last several years. I think most of it was the result of closing Elmhurst, and it's just accrued. So we got, okay, so we got some savings from yes, that. Perhaps. Yes, and I don't know that everybody was sure exactly where those savings, you know, how they were going to shake out because the teachers moved, but I think in the end it did uh, provide a significant savings to have that school off the you know the yeah. maintenance of the school and all off the books so uh, the surplus has accrued over time and the boilers uh, we have I think the oldest boilers at the middle school and I think it's 70 or 80 years old it's way past really? its useful that, life yeah. yes and so it's uh, been the hard work of our maintenance department that has kept these boilers going but there are mornings that they come in and they have trouble getting them started so we just feel like we're on our last legs and we do have this surplus that we don't think it would be wise to put it into operational um, expenses because that would create a deficit down the road so the boiler project just looks like it's um, a great opportunity to upgrade all those systems system-wide. So all the boilers and all the schools would be upgraded in addition to some lighting that w is, provides a really good return on energy savings. It's a whole package that we've put together with the uh, consultants from National Grid through a program that actually 
uh, President Hamilton encouraged us to explore. So um, it seems like a good time and there's a lot of incentives coming yeah. from the state to, um, to embark on this at this time and then that would seem like a good use of funds. Of yeah, the funds. It, it, it is something you kind of have to do. I you mean, do. We, you know, it's like it's just like the roads in this town. You know, a couple of years ago we had no road maintenance, yeah. and funded at least, which was kind of silly when you think about it, and mm -hmm. you have to pay attention to that. Uh, one of the articles that I read in the Newport Daily News about that decision uh, also reflected, you know, there's this issue of trying the town wanting to get some of that sur surplus money to use in the general fund, et cetera. Uh, this, the, the article in the Newport Daily News showed that this would be a way because of some rebates and some other things from the state that might come back actually to the town. So it might be a way, kind of a, a oblique way of getting some of this, some of these dollars back into the town. Can you talk about that? or? Yeah. yeah, well, right now, uh, what you do is when you put in projects, there's, of course, the usual bureaucracy. You put on the forms and get approvals. Now, some items are, um, the boilers are probably the key issue for the rebate, is that are they considered an upgrade or are they considered a health and safety issue? I believe if they're health and safety, we can get a rebate on that. If they consider the maintenance issue an upgrade, yeah. then we don't. Now, for example, the lighting, we're getting, that's an upgrade and we're getting a rebate from National Grid, but the uh, ride won't uh, participate in that. So it really depends on what ride decides. We do expect to see a rebate, but the amount will be determined on how they judge these projects, how it fits into the various categories. Okay, ride is the Rhode Island Department, the Department of Education. Education. That's yeah, they where oversee the uh, yes. school program. The now, are they an elected body as well? I wonder, right? Uh, no. 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 Uh, no. No, they are overseen by the Commission on Education, which mm -hmm. was combined from Upper Education 12K a few years ago. But as they operate day to day, it's the Commissioner of Education oversees that. Right now, that's Commissioner okay. Gisk. But, but I thought it was interesting that, that your finance director was kind of, you know, looking for ways to do this the right way, to get right. that surplus so right. it could be... Right kind of recycled and stuff. Right. The, yes. the town will be getting a, surplus, uh, a return on the money that we spent on the tennis right. courts, too, because yeah. that was an, a, a pre-approved project for under health and safety okay. and, and was yeah. approved by RIDE. So the money that, as part of that T3 project uh, for the tennis courts, there's a portion that will be yes, coming yes. back to the town. And, and as the Newport Daily News article, Jim Johnson does a great job on these things, I think, said, this is a legal way for the mm -hmm. town to get yes. part of that you know, without changing the law, which right. probably won't happen anyway. Uh, another decision you made last week, which I thought was interesting, I was looking through uh, both the article and some other things on, on school committee issues, was uh, a policy, you approved a policy allowing video surveillance on school property. And I guess I was surprised that there isn't already some kind of surveillance, just for safety reasons, if nothing else. Uh, can you give us some background on that decision? Why, do we have a significant uh, issue here with uh, we, safety or anything? Or We put cameras in a while ago, yeah. um, and then we had some software issues, but we, when we had the bomb scares at the high school, that's when cameras, we did install some at the high school, and then yeah. we expanded that out to the other schools. But what we did the other night was updated the policy because we, uh, put in some new software because we were having problems with the initial software package yeah. that came with the camera. So we're using the existing cameras, but a new software package, and we just wanted to get our policy up to date. Okay. So yeah, I think the first one was a bit cumbersome. It, it involved a bit more bureaucracy, and this now gives it, I guess, sort of streams line, lines it for the superintendent. You know, it right. just makes it easier All for day to day. All the oversights yeah. by the over is but by the superintendent, by the yeah, superintendent. That's, that was right. spelled out right. pretty yeah. clearly yeah, yeah but right now i think the main threat and i think the main benefit is just vandalism we've had incidents Absolutely. over the years so yeah. and it's really what it's for right now i mean i mean it does offer other security benefits yeah. but there are other measures that we take I, in I know the, the conspiracy theorists are out there you know it's big government watching you and all that stuff but the thing is i think if it helps keep our kids yeah. safe Right. We should be looking and into our property it. safe. And our property too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, you you also agreed uh, last week to establish a truancy division program, and I guess th this is going to be known as the truancy court in the school district. 
do we have a significant truancy problem in Portsmouth? I don't think it's significant, but I don't think we, the problems that we do have, we haven't really been, been pursuing them as proactively as we could have been. And, yeah. and the way we have to do it now entails sending families, if it follows a whole series of, you know, through the school efforts, but then it ends up in family court. And this would allow um, families not to have to go to family court. We could deal with this right internally in the school building. In the school so the judge yeah. comes to us, and I think it will be in the high school library, I believe. Okay. Yeah, yeah so it's easier on families. It's really. And, okay, and, 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 and I think Middletown and Newport already have that, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I think we had one at one time too, and I don't know if it went out of favor for some reason or yeah. another, so um, we're just bringing it back. Yeah, I, I just thought it was interesting that coming up at the same time as the surveillance thing, I didn't know oh, if there was yeah. any relationship. Well, totally, uh, well, coincidental, well, well, I think. Yeah, well, I think, I think it two benefits is, well, one, it's free, so <laughs> we're not paying anything for it. But, but I think it prevents keeping the kids out of the formal system, and I think that's important. Because yeah. if, they're, if they're having a truancy issue, there's obviously other issues behind it, and we want to keep as much space between them and the system. Yeah, yeah, because absolutely. once they go in that system, then it's very difficult to pull yourself back out. Yeah. Uh, any, any, anything we can do to try to keep kids safe these days would be something a good thing, I think. Uh, j just from a citizen's perspective, which is basically what I am here in this in this discussion, is uh, I, I think it appears to me that relations between the school department and the town council and and the town administration have improved greatly over the last couple of years, which I think is a, a really good thing. I mean, I think there, we need more dialogue and, and discussion. Uh, and I'd like, I like the idea of joint meetings to discuss budgets and things like that so they get the stuff out of the way before it has to go before form, the formal approval process. Uh, how would you characterize this relationship and how important do you think it is going forward to continue to improve that? I think it's very important and it's equally important for the uh, the superintendent to work with the town administrator and unfortunately the way it worked out uh, you know, Mr. Clem had kind of made a decision to move on yeah. right about the same time Anna had come on board so they really haven't had a whole lot of you know even probably in practical purposes incentive to get into sure. a real relationship because they both knew they were leaving so I think it's it will be very important for the next town administrator coming on and the superintendent to form a relationship yeah I think citizens like to see all these groups working together yeah, sure you know. sure more communication less politics yeah, abso <laughs> absolutely uh, one, one of the issues and this is kind of a segue from my questions but uh, has to do with IT and technology. I know Keith Hamilton would like to see, as we, as the town council has been trying to get for the last couple of years, some support from the schools in a way of IT, because mainly because there's no budget for IT in the town council, which in the town hall, which is kind of their fault. But uh, is there any chance of this? I know your IT people are probably already working full time, uh, right. but yeah. uh, how do you look at that IT issue? Well, we don't. From your perspective. Right. We don't have people sitting around doing nothing on one hand, but we did. We do have the expertise that we think could be a benefit to the town. And so we would like the town council to look and the town administration to look at to the schools more for their expertise and maybe supporting if they have a you know a part-time person or something uh, you know we could offer the the level of expertise and then we also talked about over the summer months they have funded some upgrades that are our IT department recommended. Okay, so they, are, they have they worked together. I do already. well. I think they've put some funds in this upcoming budget, and we were anticipating over the summer months to be able to help implement some of those upgrades. Would you? And Tom's chair of the IT department, so yeah. I should really turn well, this over to you, Tom. Well, there are two <laughs> issues. The first issue is the current state of the town, and not to get into details. Um, 
but the town IT. Uh, the, yes. the town IT, which really is just a hodgepodge of various Absolutely. pieces of equipment and that. things like that. But there's, uh, but before we can come in and provide any sort of service, you have to meet a, a certain level of technology. So the two issues is one is to come in, upgrade, replace equipment, put in the ap appropriate equipment that you need, licenses for software. Then the second is to negotiate some sort of contract for service. And so, you know, what level does an out a third party party provider come in and provide that sort of everyday tech support that the school supply that um, yeah. and those are so but they're two s separate issues the first issue I think we're pretty much in agreement that they do need hardware upgrades to get their software license issues set up and then after that I would assume after the new um, town administrator comes in I would like to wait until that person is to say what's your vision for IT yeah. uh, what level service you want and what you know, what type of money you like to put into that. Yeah, I think when John Clem came here from uh, the Cape, he had a seven-person IT department. <laughs> <laughs> and he came down and, where's my IT person? Right. <laughs> uh, we don't have one. Uh, so, so that's an issue. And, and it, the thing is, IT is playing such an important role everywhere. One of the places in the school, I understand you're the kind of honcho of the bring your own device uh, program yes. or whatever you call it. Yeah, How is that working like that. out? And well, right now um, it's working. Uh, we have the uh, IT department has notified me that they set up a virtual network that runs on top of the regular network. So the BYOD, all these devices are our little uh, students are bringing in, or I like to call them our p hackers, <laughs> are running on a uh, network that is isolated from the uh, core school network. Okay. And right now they're generally being used uh, for doing classroom quizzes, taking polls. Uh, assigning homework, things like that. Uh, kids will use the cameras to take pictures of the boards, things like that. And there are a few teachers, I believe about 10 I was told, that have taken that beyond that and fully integrated it into their uh, curriculum. Now, one issue that we have here is that you introduce new technology, new methods, and but there's no professional development behind that. So right now, uh, to sort of move that forward, we're starting to look at ways that we can um, well, sort of bring both the teachers and the students along because yeah. though students are tech savvy, uh, we found other school departments their experiences say that it's in more the entertainment side of the business rather than the, pr yeah. the professional uh, education side. So both sides need to be trained a bit more to make now, it. Now, fully when you integrated. say bring your own device, you're talking about like what? A, phones, a, computers, anything a, you like. Some kind of tablet. A tablet, yeah. yes. I think with kids used uh, phones, phones, I believe, and tablets. Yeah. yeah. And, but with this will be the springboard to what we hope will be a one-to-one -one initiative. Yeah. And we're not too sure how that's going to look. Could yet. you guys partner with Apple or somebody <laughs> or some big company like Microsoft and get a bunch well, of free computers? Well, well, we're being very careful about this because we have looked at other school districts. Los Angeles School uh, Department spent about eight billion dollars on iPads, and that didn't quite work out for them. Yeah. And so we are taking the cost approach, looking at various technologies, Chromebooks, uh, it's, you know, maybe traditional laptops. Whether there's some sort of parent program where they would buy the equipment off of our bid list, get a discount, or we provide it for the students. Yeah. We're not too sure how that's going to work. This is very preliminary, yeah. and, uh, and we're trying to be cautious because it's v you can make very expensive mistakes. I can, I can see. I mean, yes. yeah, <laughs> you know, trying to get an iPad yes. for everybody in the school yes. would be kind of expensive. Yeah. And they're easy to break and, <laughs> yeah. and all those kind of things. Yes. Well, I, but, but that's good, and we, we should do a program sometime yes. just on technology. Yes and the yeah. schools because I think there's a lot of meat there. Oh, there is. One yeah. other issue that I, I need to talk about, and it's, it, it's a tough one. It's park testing, you know, the, the, the testing that's been going on. And I guess the issue seems to be basically some pushback from people who, for some reason, don't want their kids, or, or the, it, maybe it's the kids telling their parents they don't want to take this test. I was amazed, though, that even in Tiverton, where, where a lot of people kind of opted out, some people actually wanted to take it on paper rather than on a computer. I mean, what is, you know, so I guess my question is, wh what is our policy on park? I understand it's pretty clear cut. We, yes, there is no opt out policy. Um, there were some parents that um, sent letters in uh, requesting that their child not take the test. 
Um, and then there were uh, some kids that just chose not to take the test, but I think many of them have uh, signed up for a makeup test. And so there really is no opt out. Uh, the SAT is going to be formulated on the park uh, somewhere between 2017 and 2020. This will become a graduation requirement in Portsmouth. So it's really to the kids' benefits to take the park. So, and this year it didn't count for anything. Yeah, especially it now, was, I mean, it's... It yes, was, right. so it was, it was really to everybody's benefit that they participate and get the practice in. You know, since when do kids just decide that I don't want to take a test? Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it seems like part of the issue is you know, who, who designed the test and where, where the questions are coming from. And the thing is, wouldn't you want it designed by the best people in the country? I mean, you know, right. rather than just me and my school district, I want to ask them these questions. I mean, it seems to me that it's kind of a no-brainer. We've right? been talking for years about how we have to be more competitive with other countries, yeah. and it was Absolutely. a it was a governor's ish, uh, initiative yeah. under Bush to... Um, go embark on the common core standards and it teaches the kids more of yeah. critical thinking skills. And I, I, I guess the, the only thing that bothers me is there seems to be some a little bit of pushback from teachers because of probably because of being forced to kind of teach to the test or something I don't know. There's also a component that the tests may be used as part of their evaluation. I think that's more the I issue. think that's really <laughs> that's more the what, issue what on the, the teacher's issue. side. Well, anyway, that's something we're going to keep an eye on, but I, I just uh, I can't imagine why somebody would not would opt out of something as important as this for kids in their future. Well, I think yeah. this is more fear-driven and from what I see. It could be. And, yes. And you know, and it's it's probably like any test. I mean, yes. you know, you you ask yourself, can my child pass that test that gives gets them into college and gets them out of high school and but I mean that's the whole point of going to school yes. isn't it? Yes. I mean to learn some yeah. yeah. I, I mean for me the, the most cynical thing you could say about the park test is it's just another standardized test they change about every 10 years yeah and and I don't really see well the big difference I think between this and other tests is that a real attempt was made to prevent teaching to the test because it's really, they test the kids' understanding right. rather than just regurgitating facts that they get. Yeah. And they're presented with problems, they're asked to solve these problems. And you can't really teach to that and I think that brings a concern if you think you're a teacher and you're gonna be evaluated on it. Yeah. You know, how do you, how do you uh, teach? Well, that's an issue yeah. we'll have to and look at going forward, I guess. One last point on assessments. Uh, one of our initiatives for next year is we're, we've uh, purchased some new assessment tools that are gonna eliminate a lot of the assessment testing. So next year, the Portsmouth students will actually see less time spent in assessments than they yeah, did I this year. Yeah, I just think the time seemed kind of excessive. We're, we're almost out of time which I knew we would be. I want to mention one thing. Uh, the last couple of shows we've had uh, your uh, school principals on. And I got to tell you, those guys came shining through. I think they're, they were all yeah. enthusiastic and they did a great job sh you know, showing off their schools here. So give them a pat on the back for me. I thought it was great. We appreciate you taking the time to showcase Portsmouth education Not at all. too. That, yeah, that's what we do here. And uh, thank you both for, for coming. And I hope you come back sometime. We can talk about some of these other issues. Uh, that's it for me, Doug Smith. We'll see you next time on Portsmouth This Week.